All right. Hello, everyone. Benoit Fouché here, Peak Performance Coach. I'm here today with Portia Mead, uh, who's a yoga teacher and a breath coach. And uh, she's particularly interested in uh, doing some breath work with teenagers. So we're going to talk today about this topic, uh, breathing, why is it important, uh, the challenges of being a teenager and what breathing can do to help you. Where do we start? Maybe we start with, um, yeah, what led you to, what led you to do some uh, breath work and the oxygen advantage course and all of this? Yeah. So basically I got up to the point where I was 30 years old and um, struggling to get out of bed because of a bad back. And I had a, a thyroid condition um, mm. and the medication they gave me um, led me on to having depression. So, and I remember the doctor saying to me, oh, it's a natural side effect of the medication for your thyroid that you should be um, on antidepressants. And I, so I just thought, my God, that's really kind of saying, okay, great, that's my future now is, is all these tablets. So I think I sort of went away and thought, no, this is, this can't be right. I'm 30 years old and I feel like I'm about a hundred, you know, I'm going downhill fast. So I just did loads of research into well-being and yoga and diet and everything. And yoga then obviously became the, the sort of the daily practice for me which led me on to think, why didn't we get taught this stuff at school? Why wasn't I being told that I could, you know, move and I could eat better in order to improve, you know, to, to have a happier, healthier life? Mm -hmm. So um, as a result of all the work I was doing, I was then able to um, stop taking my medication and I'm tested regularly and, and my thyroid levels and everything are all fine and no antidepressants or anything like that since. So it just proved to me that the, that was that stuff worked you know and I thought okay so realistically if I'd known that that was what was affecting me it was my stress it was a poor diet it was the fact that I, I wasn't ever taking time for myself then I would have there's probably lots of situations through growing up that I could have used those tools so it kind of has expanded from there really that was the catalyst and I went on to teach then I started with like the little children doing yoga with them like the sort of fun game type style yoga classes with them first of all and then I went into schools but it just never felt like that was kind of enough and another part of after I started to get fitter and healthier and happier it was then challenging myself and I thought I know I'm going to enter the London Marathon even though I wasn't a runner um, I kind of had this new mindset you know I could do anything now so I entered into the London Marathon and, and part of that was you needed to get over the kind of that that feeling like you needed to be able to do it didn't you you mentally had to be tuned in and say I can do this they said I read something that said it was about 59% mindset and the rest of it was actually the skill of running so I thought okay so it's my mind that's going to really going to be what's that's pushing me here so I went off started training for that and then I got injured. And so then I started to learn about breathing. And so I read um, The Oxygen Advantage by Patrick McEwen. And that then made me go, OK, so the breath has a really big impact as well. And how that comes into play with when I'm running and also just getting me through the anxiety and the stress and everything else as well. So that was then the, the kind of my knowledge about breath came into play there. Obviously, that expanded with the yoga as well, because there's a lot of different techniques in yoga as well. And and then I realized, OK, so the breathing is actually now much more important in so many different aspects, not just in your, you know, some people think it relates to their health. Some people think it relates to their endurance. Some people think it relates to anxiety. It relates to everything, literally mm. every part of our life. So yeah. that, again, for me was right now. I know this. I want to share this with the younger generation. So everything that I learn and every tool that I learn, I just sort of think right, I need to get this into schools. I need kids learning this stuff so that they know how to put all this stuff into practice as they move forward in life. Mm. Awesome. Uh, that's, that's a great introduction. So many things. One thing that I, I, I like with the 59%, I think it's 59.28, but uh, let's be, <laughs> how can you say 59%? I'm wondering, but hey, that's my mind uh, going on with this. Uh, one thing I would like to, uh, to point is that like, uh, you had big challenges with your health. Uh, Teenagers is definitely an age where uh, we have big challenges. And um, yeah, as for me, for instance, teenagers is was full of acne and uh, not uh, as confident as I could be now for, uh, as the moment, uh, of course. 
uh, a bit bullied, uh, you know, like numbing yourself, doing, doing your best to find solutions. Um, so was, was it a bit like this for you as well? Yeah, well, I mean, definitely that the reason why I think I, I relate all this to being a teenager is because I really struggled through my teenage years. So I think mm -hmm. there's just so many parts of me that thinks that's why it's so essential that, that kids are learning this stuff. And obviously I'm a mother of, of teenagers myself now as well, so that I see what's going on around them. I see how they're impacted every day and the pressure on them now is just obviously getting greater and greater every day. The good thing is obviously they've got so much internet access now and social media stuff that's kind of promoting movement and breath so that's great they are seeing it but just, I just don't feel it's getting pushed as much especially in schools I feel like it needs to be put in schools but my own experience was um I struggled a lot with anxiety I had panic attacks when I was younger um around food related like eating out in public and things like that I went through a really challenging phase of um coming into sort of becoming a woman and getting bullied and so as a result of that I did try taking an overdose so there were so many times in my life that I thought okay if I'd if I'd known how to just be more self-aware which I think comes from the breath and the movement it just to know myself understand myself better to have taken the time to have slowed down in moments of panic and stress that I would have been able to prevent those situations. I mean, thank, luckily I'm still here obviously to tell the tale and, and now I'll use my experience to help others. But it, you know, it's, it's that thing that you sort of think, I just wish that there was that kind of, we've all been through it. It's a difficult time. We just need the tools to manage it. That's the best thing, thing we can do. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it is good for the being, like you talk about anxiety, being bullied and these kind of things. It's also good for performance, like a, in my field, like I used a lot of breathing work with uh, Arthur and other uh, players that I've coached, and it's it's very very useful. And I, I, I'm I'm like you. It's like uh, let's promote this work. Let's let's have this everywhere we can. And at schools, that would be awesome. You know, by the way, that once I was with my wife in Thailand, uh, we were walking in the streets and next to a school, and we saw uh, the whole school meditating with the older kids. I was like really that's amazing. oh <laughs> they thought they understood something we haven't so yeah it's cool I think that's it I think you know my daughter comes home from school and she tells me stuff that she's learned in her school day that I think why would you need to know that information yet she can't tell me how to just check in and ask herself how she feels and and what she should do when she's feeling you know overwhelmed or stressed or or even like you just said, you know, using breath work in a, in a physical sense, you know, when they're taught to do pee lessons, they're not taught how to breathe properly. Even stretching's kind of missed a little bit now. It's just straight to the action, isn't it? So I just feel like they, they kind of need to just think about breath being so important in so many ways. They could be utilizing that to enhance somebody growing up in, in every part of their life. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. In Russia as well, you know that I, I, I train a lot with uh, strong first and uh the the guy behind strong first pavel tatsulin is he's teaching a lot about breath work and uh, saying that in russia they start with the breathing for every exercise how to synchronize uh breath so it's it's very essential and hopefully um we'll get through this so uh, why are breathing exercises important for teenagers what can they gain you touched a bit on this. Can we say more or is it enough what we say? We talk about anxiety. Uh, yeah, I mean, COVID. when it comes to breathing exercises, I think what people, or like my daughter, for example, she'll say to me, I know how to breathe. And that is the kid's instant answer. I know how to breathe. What they don't realize is that there's different breathing exercises for different things. So, you know, and we're not breathing properly either, is being the main thing. So because of not breathing properly, there's an increase in cases of asthma, snoring, people having lack of concentration, um, again, panic attacks, because not able to get the breath where they need it to be quickly. So, you know, it, it can in help in every aspect. But, you know, most importantly for um, endurance and well-being as well, learning to use the breath to really build up your your lung capacity so that you're then able to go out into a training environment and, and really be at your best when you're breathing and not be kind of panting and short of breath. So, you know, it's, it's helping in 
with sleep, concentration, exams, anxiety, um, health and well-being, like you said, um, even like skin and how you look and feel, just absolutely everything. Mm. That's a lot. Um, awesome. Yeah. What what improvements can they witness? Like any way to measure ob objectively or subjectively that okay, I've improved in my breathing. So what would be the end when they they would do this breathing exercise? What could they gain from it? It's a hard one, isn't it, to measure? Because often we don't see the improvement. It's a bit like my yoga practice. You know, I sort of feel like I'm still doing the same poses today as I was doing when I started 10 years ago, but it's definitely not the case. I am a little bit deeper into them and, and things like that. So I think it's, it's, it's hard to measure the improvement other than seeing it in how you respond. So the fact that, you know, sleep does get better, the fact that your skin looks healthier, the fact that you are more self-aware and you're able to control difficult situations better, the fact that you're... Um, you're running and you're or you're walking even you know walking up hills a good one isn't it we tend to really pant when we're walking uphill but if you've learned to breathe properly then hopefully you've got that more under control and you're certainly not drawing in through the mouth you're just drawing in through the nose so it's you'll see improvements in little ways it's but it is going to be a, a practice like everything it's something that you need to continually keep up after one session you'll certainly feel better from a breathing exercise but not necessarily see um you know an instant improvement So if I understand is to incorporate uh, throughout your days, is it what you mean? Yeah, I think once you learn these exercises, certainly the stuff that I teach, then it's stuff that you need to just put into your daily life. You know, when I when I walk the dog, I'm trying to use the breathing exercise then. When I'm doing my yoga practice, I use the breathing exercises then. It's just, it's it's, it's a continual thing. And then again, like I said, anxiety situations, you, you've Once you learn to use the breath, you know, okay, I can quickly tune in with my breath and I know that I can take control of this situation. So it's just knowing when to start bringing it in and making it something that you constantly come back to. Yeah, I think uh, the anxiety and going from anxiety to being confident and being able to control situations, I think is to me the, the most important. Okay, it's good to have a nice skin and uh, being able to deal with any stress. And uh, we know everybody has some stress, especially these days. So um, uh, I would like to, to dive more a little bit. But before that, I know that you, your background is uh, starting from yoga. And in yoga, we do the pranayama is uh, another word for breathing exercises. And then you went to the oxygen advantage. We have also their sets of exercises. Um, what are the similitude and uh, what is there comparisons or how do you integrate both or how do you see it at this moment now? Yeah, it was quite interesting, actually, because when I started to train in the auction advantage, he would say about how yoga teachers had come to him because and found it completely different to the pranayama, because obviously you're working a lot more with the um hypoxia effect the kind of the the being without oxygen and how how you then how that flushes the system through and and how that then improves how the body responds to them drawing oxygen back in and, and so that's where the endurance side comes from and that's where the high altitude training comes from whereas pranayama is much more about you're going more into that relaxed state that self-aware you're you're calming down um Again, they do use some of the exercises that they where you're sort of doing the, the breath of fire and you're flushing the, the, the belly in and out and things like that. So that would be working on the digestive health. But so Oxygen Advantage is much more focused on, I would say, the, the sport and the physical benefits and the respiratory health and the snoring. That's what that's doing. Whereas Pranayama is much more about the mindset and the stress and anxiety. But having said that, obviously, both are bringing you into the moment because you're focusing purely on the breath. So that both of them are going to be a very self-aware practice. Both of them are going to be benefit, benefiting you in lots of different ways. But one is definitely more focused on one side and one is definitely more focused on the other side. Okay, awesome. Awesome. So I think we, we, talk, we touched about, um, yeah, you, you talked about many things. Uh, and for people who don't know, like, you know, you talked about fire, breath, you talked about the high altitude and uh, oxygen, uh, less oxygen and all of this. So is there any way to simplify, like just for the moment, for the sake of this, uh, for this uh, interview, uh, is there one thing people can do right now and they can have a, a, a little bit of experience of this? Yeah, 
so my favorite one is just and I use it in every single class pretty much is the box breathing exercise which a lot of people use and know so it's the inhaling for four holding the breath for four exhaling for four and holding the breath out for four so we can do you want to do that now yeah let's do it like uh maybe 30 okay, seconds so we'll do a run through that so you could just get a feel for this is a really good one just to start you off learning about your breath. How does it feel to work with your breath? How does it feel to have control over your breath rather than just, a, just allowing yourself to breathe naturally? So th the first thing I always start with is obviously just, first of all, noticing your breath. So just even sat here now, just notice yourself breathing always in and out through the nose, not through the mouth. And just noticing how it feels, where it's going. Are you taking the breath into the belly or into the chest? And then what we're going to do then is we're going to inhale into the nose. We're going to draw the breath all the way down to the bottom of the rib cage for the count of four. Then we're going to hold it there for four, exhale for four, and then hold it out for four. Okay, so big breath in. So one, two, three, four. Hold the breath. Two, three, four. Exhale. Two, three, four. Hold the breath out. Two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four, hold the breath, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, hold the breath out, two, three, four. We'll do one more time. Inhale, two, three, four, hold the breath, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, hold the breath out two, three, four. And then just allow yourself to go back to normal breathing. And then that's just already you notice, okay, how do I feel now? And instantly you should feel more relaxed, a little bit calmer. You're more aware of where your breath is going, how it feels to breathe. And it just instantly kind of takes that edge off of whatever you're doing. Mm. How do you feel? <laughs> yeah, exactly what you said. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a uh, Right now, I'm aware of how I'm breathing and uh, more calm. And you now I'm going to start. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people don't even realize that they breathe in and out through their mouth. Until you do an exercise like that, then they go, okay, so I have to do it just in my nose. And they realize the struggle just doing it through their nose. And we've got no filtration system in the mouth. So there's no way of filtering the air as it's coming in. Whereas the nose has been built particularly for us to breathe the mouth isn't built to, to breathe through there's no filtration whereas the nose has been built particularly to breathe and to filter the air so doing this exercise just makes us very aware that okay that's how it feels to just breathe through my nose that's how it should feel all the time when I'm breathing so the more you practice that or any breathing exercise the more you'll realize this is what it should feel like not when I'm walking around the house sort of breathing in and out through my mouth so this, this exercise, again, you, you use it every, every beginning of classes, but what people can do, uh, when can, can people use this one in particular? That's just a really good one. I, I teach that one a lot to kids because especially when they, they can go home and take that home to use when they're in a situation where they feel, <clears throat> excuse me, where they feel, you know, stressful, stressful or, or if they're in sort of um, an, an argument with a parent or something like that, I often say to them to use that exercise because it just brings them straight into the moment and they can just check in with themselves. That gives them the opportunity to calm down and then they can sort of move forward from there. So it's just something, again, going to sleep as well. If you're struggling in bed at night, that's a really nice one to use as you're laying in bed instead of going, why can't I sleep and getting agitated to sit there doing that one is, is a really good one to help you just drop off to sleep. So it's like a feel good uh, exercise, this one. Yeah. Is there any one for that you like, especially for performance for for athletes? Yeah, the performance ones are particularly more about extending the exhale. So you could use the same concept as what we've just done, but do a longer exhale. So hold the breath out for longer. Exhale longer and then hold the breath out longer. So so inhale for four hold the breath for four, exhale for four, and then hold the breath out for eight if you can. If that's difficult, then maybe do the longer exhale for eight and hold out for four. You know, if it, just in case, if, but then as long as you're not going, <gasps> when you're gasping back in, you wanna slowly back in through the nose, back in for that four again, and then doing it that, that way, then you're building up your, your respiratory health. Okay, that will help for performance. 
mm-hmm. for endurance. That will help for endurance performance, definitely. Yeah. And again, <clears throat> my voice keeps going. <laughs> um, and again, just kind of general health, well-being, mindset, the whole thing, it will do everything. But that's the one that's particularly focused on endurance and, um, and yet yeah, performance related. Okay, awesome. Uh, a few more quick questions. Uh, is there any physical conditions when breathing exercises are not a good idea or even dangerous? Not really with younger people. Um, asthma is particularly good for asthma. Obviously, you, you've got to be self-aware enough to know if something doesn't feel right. This is sort of something I always say in a yoga class as well, whether it's breath or movement. You know your own body. You know what you can and can't do. So just be really aware if something doesn't feel right or it's pushing you physically, then just stop is the idea. Um, but, I mean, I think you said yourself, obviously doing it when you're driving and things like that isn't recommended because it's quite dangerous. If you're pregnant, then you've got to be careful about holding the breath out for a long period of time or doing anything that's, you know, could cause any um, imbalances down there. But otherwise, no, I mean, all the breathing exercises are, are, are built to enhance you. So, no, there they shouldn't be any other. It yeah. should asthma and things like that should all improve. OK. Okay, and uh, you were talking a little bit about snoring. Uh, is there anything for snoring you we can talk about right now? So snoring comes again from being a mouth breather. If you're a mouth breather and or and you suffer with asthma and things like that, then you're going to be a snorer. You can get some. Um, the the tape is what they recommend through the oxygen advantage training. They they suggest that that's a really good way to start. A lot of people don't want to have their mouth taped up, so there is some quite good ones you can get that are more kind of to encourage the mouth to be closed rather than just completely um, sealed. But that would be the best cure. Um, but trying to get your day breathing to just through the nose, you know, just being much more aware of how you're, how much you're breathing through your nose when you're eating, you know, eating with your mouth shut. So you're breathing through your nose. There's loads of little clues that you can see in yourself and in your behavior, but we just don't, you know, ask your friends and family to tell you, do I breathe through my mouth? Mm. (laughs) They'll know. (laughs) Mm. Okay. I haven't uh, thought about paying attention when I eat, uh, how I, breathe with my oh i think okay i'll check <laughs> <laughs> you can normally tell because if someone's eating with their mouth open then they're sort of breathing in and out through the mouth whilst they're eating that's why they're eating with their mouth open so it's just that they're not using their nose so it's it's that it's, it's little signs snoring mm. it, it, all these little things are basically saying you're not breathing you could do the bolt test as well i don't know whether you've done the bolt score test before as well which um yeah. patrick McKinney talks about which is um, the test to see how long you can hold your breath out. There's a video on YouTube that's really um, yeah. he, that he's done. I will link this, yeah. Yeah, and that that then just gives you an idea as to how you know how dysfunctional your breathing actually is. I was surprised by how bad mine was when I first did it. You know, yeah. so it is something that it, like everything, you have to do it as a practice. Yeah. Awesome. Um, you talked about oxygen advantage. Um, any book, any or pranayama, or from Patrick that you recommend that you really liked, or any other book on breathing to start to investigate? Yeah, obviously I like Patrick McEwen's book because that's where I started. But I was actually going to suggest um, "Just Breathe" um, by Dan Brawl. I think it is because his one is it's got the education behind it. He's also got the spiritual side, but he also gives a real good selection of different breathing exercises which I think is a good place to start so as we've sort of touched on it's good just to get a feel for what works for you because not you might not want to do all the different exercises so it's good just to try different things and then stick with ones that you like Um, the more you can bring them into your daily life like we've said the better Um, and then another one for people that literally if you're literally at the start and thinking I don't even know where to begin with getting to know my breath and it's quite meditative this one is um, draw breath with uh tom granger is a so it's a he he's done exercises so that you run a pencil along a pattern at the same time as you're breathing and he's is allowing me to share some of the exercises on my website which is currently being built um so that people can download them and use them because i loved it i thought it was such a lovely idea of of the kind of the meditative side the creative side so you're bringing everything together so it's kind of sort of drawing hearts and inhaling on one side and then exhaling on the other side of the heart or it's drawing an elephant and you're so you're drawing the breath as you're breathing so that's a really nice introduction and again he does sort of pinpoint the education behind it in certain parts as well so it does touch on it 
but the main thing is it's it's more about just really going into that moment you know if you could sit down with that sort of 10 minutes every day wouldn't that be a lovely way to just engage with your breath and, and take your mind out of the craziness of your daily life mm. awesome awesome so well thank you thank you Porsche. it's awesome all of this uh, information and um Well, uh, anywhere uh, you would like to be reached uh, or where people can see your work or. Yeah, so I'm, um, I've got the, so everything is teen oxygen awareness, the website, which, like I said, is under being built <laughs> under construction, yeah. but that's teen oxygen awareness .co .uk. Mm. The Instagram is teen oxygen awareness and my Facebook page is teen oxygen awareness as well. So Simple. you can, and then at the moment I've got a YouTube channel as well. Um, so you can find everything under those that name and on YouTube there's a good selection of different videos to give you an idea of starting with just some breathing exercises and everything's done in a more of a kind of interactive way I didn't want to just sit there going okay now breathe with me there, there's videos to watch so that you feel like you're engaging with the video um, so I just wanted to make it a bit more kind of fun to sit and breathe with basically awesome so I'll put this uh, all of these links in the notes of this episode well Thank you. Uh, in a way, I'm very happy that you have uh, had these challenges in your life because it. Uh, I'm sorry for the pain. And at the same time, it brought you here with this awareness and desire to help more people and uh, bring this to, the, to a planet that needs to be more at peace, for sure. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely.